He belonged to an ancient race of people known as the Cymry, the Welsh. Once your people and your country were free, we did all customs, language, army and government, 700 years ago, right? So well in Africa, faith, the real Prince of Wales spent his life trying to maintain Welsh independence and Wales free from English control. Build a nation state, maintain the Welsh legal system and avoid war with England. It would cost him his life. Despite Llewellyn's honesty, the English king, Edward, broke every treaty signed between England and Wales. On purpose, he conned us. Llewellyn was betrayed and assassinated at Kilmeary near Brecon, and on the 12th of September 1282, we lost our independence. Just over 100 years later, in 1400, we had another goal. The Welsh rule was led by Owen Clinton in rebellion against English rule. Welsh freedom was briefly restored. But by 1412, the English invaded again, and Wales was once more under the English jackboot. It is an everyday thing in Wales to hear tame comments passed by Welshmen about the English, calling them the old enemy. Such remarks are often sheepishly made, and more often disguised as a joke because they're embarrassed. However, that they stem from an almost very deep memory, deep in the Welshman's psyche, is a sure thing. This collective memory in Welsh is known as Kennedal Gove, memory of a nation. The Welshman knows that he is not valued, that somehow he is being screwed, manipulated. He identifies the people that do it, do it, do it to him as them. He identifies them as the English power system. He knows very little about how they do it to him, and he knows very little about his own history, because they have made sure that he does not have a history. He does not have the tools to work out what his English masters are up to. He does not care about, nor does he truly understand politics. And we know, me and Bob, as we just finished knocking four and a half thousand doors and played. So we know, we know what people care about. He has learned that someone else will do all that stuff for him. It's someone else's responsibility. He knows very little about the government, local or national works, as no one has ever given him a reason to try and understand. The Welsh people are governed by England. Wales is a conquered, is a conquered country, whether you like it or not. We are governed by a foreign army with a foreign legal system. The English state, otherwise, is referred to as the United Kingdom. You take your pick, but we don't run ourselves. The fact that this state of affairs has come to be as a result of a series of illegal invasions a long time ago makes no difference. An illegal act is an illegal act, however long ago it occurred. In 1979, so little self-respect did the Welsh have left to themselves that when they were asked in a referendum if they wished to have a National Assembly, they voted no. And I was there. Oh yes, I was there pushing all those leaflets through the doors. But I watched the Labour Party coming down the other side, telling us to vote no. Some Labour Party people were on our side, and they tried to persuade people to vote yes. But that's a long time ago. The Bushmen of Africa knew better. The English power establishment reacted to this as a sign of weakness in Wales. And those of us who remember the 80s remember how hard it was to live through it. And our economy and workforce, our economy and workforce suffered for 20 years as I watched every factory in my valley and every pit close down. Much of that time, we lived under Thatcher. But we moved on. We moved on big time. In 1998, those of us who fought the 80s, those who suffered the arrests in Operation Tarn, who was, who year was arrested in Tarn? Who spent time on bail? 18 months of the conspiracy charges where they trumped them up against us. I did. There's people in this audience who did as well. And we didn't run away. And you mustn't run away when they come after you. And they will come after you. And they will arrest you. And you need to get your lawyers sorted out and your political prisoners campaign straightened now. You need to get your political prisoners committee set up now. I refer to Tim Richards, because I was here with Tim. In 1998, another generation voted yes to set up the first National Assembly since Owen Gindle was Prince of Wales in 1400. Scotland got a parliament, and Wales got a watered down devolution settlement 
the best we could get. Let's clap for those people who worked and those assembly members that had put up with it. But they got it. With an assembly which was asked to go cap in hand to London every time we wanted to make a decision, which may upset the state's quo. On the 3rd of March 2011, yet another referendum, the Welsh voted yes. To be allowed to have limited lawmaking powers. Another step towards turning the Welsh Assembly into a proper Senate. Which way did you vote? Now is the time to choose sides. Now is the time to choose sides. Don't fetch it. The time for being polite is ended. It is ended. Are you on the side of Wales or are you on the side of the English? There is a name for those who take sides against their own people. Traitor. Bradur. Traitor. Those who wish to fight for freedom and their own people are called patriots. Which one are you? Dear Welsh citizen, please reply. Copies available. The organisers asked us to do a bit extra because some people didn't turn up. So, if you give me your permission, I'll carry on. Go ahead. Treason. Dear Welsh citizen, nationalists for 60 years have been afraid to use this word. The concept of our nationality and the community, ben community benefits state that must spring from nationalism cannot be taken seriously unless honourable and dishonourable attitudes to Welsh nationhood are defined. Welsh nationalism is, is a moral order. Our enemies, the British, have no morals. It is a matter of conscience. Welsh nationalism is not about the linguistic order, it's not about an economic order, or a particular mode of government, or the relationship between the governed and those who govern in his or her name. It is about a way of life, and a set of priorities based on community benefit and chwaratig, fair play, an idea which is entrenched in the Welshman or the Welshwoman's mind. If it is not chwaratig, it's not Welsh. Any action which offends those priorities or betrays them is defined as treason to the Welsh state and people. Far from this being a hindrance and not wanting to offend, it is a powerful weapon in the armour of those who fight for the liberation of Wales. It is a weapon of conscience. Against that weapon, the British media monopoly. Armoured cars, tanks and guns cannot prevail. In the end, conscience will prevail. Unconscious treason is no less excusable, but it comes from wrong attitudes, which have gone unchallenged for many years. Malicious treason, in cases, they are criminal acts, because they set out not to merely murder an individual, but the life of a whole nation. Let's look at some examples. It matters not that the English invaded Wales a long time ago. The age of the crime does not legalise its results. It was an illegal act then, and so it remains an illegal act now. It is treasonable then, treasonable then, to admit English power over Welsh affairs. To promote attitudes of mind in our own people, or in others which would condone this state of affairs is not admissible. It is treasonable since it gives aid and comfort to our enemies. Those who seek to perpetuate England's control over Wales, whatever motive. To accept commissions of government over the Welsh people by any pretended authority over them is treasonable because, through long custom, it appears to legitimise that rule in the mind of the simple. To earn one's living by devoting one's energies to the apparatus of an alien government is an act of treason. Premeditated treason with malice. To accept favours, however deferred, in order to combat those who work for the freedom of the Welsh people is a gross act of treason. It does not constitute an action by default, but premeditated treason with malice, an attempt to murder and snuff out the Welsh nation. 
Dear well citizen, in this age when unemployment forces our young and all us to do all sorts of things to keep body and soul together, many have forced the swear oath of allegiance to the crown, the English crown, or cooperate with it. And this brings us to the crux of the problem. And we must have great sympathy with our AMs because they face this problem. They're forced to cooperate in order to earn a living. Must we brand all those who are forced by the employment to do so? I don't think so. These are not the same category as men and women who parade their shameful allegiance to the English crown. So how does a patriot, the Welsh Nationalist Assembly member, the Welsh Nationalist MP and you maintain your moral integrity? This is an old predicament and one to which a ready solution presents itself in the form of the oath of the Welsh Republic. We've heard an attestation. We wrote another one. And you're in this. But the point is, it doesn't really matter to me, oh, it doesn't matter to you, about the wording. It's the implication. It's the sentiment that counts. Let every patriot who is forced to take an oath to the English monarch take beforehand an oath of allegiance to his own republic, notarised before two witnesses in a public place. Let them do that. I swear by Almighty God, and I may give my total loyalty to the Welsh Republic, that this is the community of hope, experience, and value of born and the yet to be born. I declare in front of these witnesses here assembled that my promise, that any promise extracted from me to serve another is just the force of conquest abhorrent to me. As God know my mind and inner thoughts, so help me God to keep the faith with my own people. Amen. I ask you, I said to you, you only take the believe when you want, everybody is. That's the first thing we said when we came up here. You find the words to a suitable oath. It doesn't matter as long as you're faithful to this republic. That's what counts. That's what counts. I got my beliefs, you got yours. To me, the republic already exists. There are people in this room who serve time in jail for it. Do you think we would have served time in jail or on bail and we were asked to beat it up in the cells and I said I did it. And if you want to see my arrest records, but you can come and have a look in my house. Alright? There are members of the Free Wills Army in here, the Workers Army of the Welsh Republic, and other members in here that I can see but I can't tell you who they are, who have served time. Do you think we're asking about that here? No. We don't want to offend anybody, but the point is, you got your beliefs. We've got to find a way together to work together for an oath that gets our assembly members off the hook. Alright? That's how it is. Uh, Rhys is going to uh, talk uh, very briefly.